The following background story was sent by one of the developers on this mod. 200 years prior to the outbreak of the Clone Wars, there was no global government on Rothia. Each island and local star system had its own. The Parolans had not one, but three civil wars before they took to the idea of any global government. The entire planet was politically unstable and had civil wars on each island and continent due to many varying views of the population. It took almost 130 years before all of the planet's inhabitants submitted to a planet-wide government. Parolis was originally a city-state and was controlled by a dictator. Just approximately 20 years before the outbreak of the Clone Wars, a Parolan senator was voted into office, being the first Parolan Rathian president. About 10 years after the president, Adali Morker, was voted into office, the Trade Federation stumbled upon the planet in hoping to establish trade agreements. The president was reluctant at first, however, he eventually started trading with the Trade Federation. At first, it all seemed too good to be true. He was right. He heard about the blockade of Naboo from a Nemoidian who could not shut his trap. Rathia did not have much of a military, especially the island of Parolis. Fearing he might be next, he cut off all trade and communication with the Trade Federation but not before buying an assortment of armaments and other supplies, of course. His security escorted any and all members of the Trade Federation back to their ships and sent them off-world. They did not put up a fight, but they were sorry that the business deal had been severed. Five years before the Battle of Geonosis, the President seized the forest moon of Zarya IV and allied with the planetary government of Tropicus, as well as establishing a shipyard in low orbit of the gas plant of Alanis. The entire system was controlled by the Rathians, much to the disapproval of the natives of the other planets, even the desert moon orbiting Rathia known as Arthemy. The Rathian Tropican Alliance initiated a lockdown in the system. The Rathian military still was not much of a military, but more of a militia and small group of ex-guerrilla fighters, as well as ex-partisans, who loved thinking that they were an unstoppable military force and that no armies or fleets of alien origins would dare to conquer their system. All that changed recently when again, a civil war erupted, this time system-wide, and then, the newly formed CIS invaded the system, primarily Trade Federation ships, and a three-way war occurred. The President changed his title three weeks into the Clone Wars. Some of the civilian population called out to the Republic, but it was to no avail, as the Republic was concentrated on high priorities. All planets in the system lost faith in the Republic. They had no hope of surviving a three-way chaotic war both in space and on the ground. They had no true warships, no true military, and Rothia's rebel groups were a thorn in the militia's side. After finally driving the CIS out by attacking supply convoys, the Republic moved in, but most of the population disliked the Republic for giving them the cold shoulder. The Republic is currently now entangled into this dangerous political conflict, not knowing who truly to fight. They constantly heard of this militia but did not take them seriously as a threat, despite a takeover of the entire system. A Republic fleet was in orbit of Rothia, after suffering a major blow from a surprise fighter and bomber attack by an unknown faction at the shipyards of Kuat. While the fleet wasn't as large or powerful as the main battle groups engaged in the Confederacy, it still made quick work of the relatively small Rathian ships in orbit. The acclimators turned their guns downward to the planet, waiting for any ships making a break for it. More and more Republic ships exited hyperspace and another blockade of the planet began, much to the dismay of the population. The Rathian mainland of Zorminus was blocked by a planetary shield strong enough to prevent bombardment by the Republic ships. The Republic would have to send smaller craft, gunships and transports down to the surface. The first groups made their way to the island of Parolis as scouting parties. The first being the 84th Recon, landing out in the countryside next to a series of farms where suspicious activity was reported. The 84th moved in under Commander Gear. An eerie feeling fell upon the troops as they crept closer to the farms, when suddenly, a group of well-armed farmers attacked them. They were quickly dispatched, with the 84th suffering minor casualties from the ambush. They pushed further inward, encountering several more groups. It was determined that these were not ordinary farmers or militia, but a well-trained army. After the skirmish, the 84th set up a forward command post and awaited further orders. Gear did not like where this was headed. He suspected a grander scheme. Hey everybody, welcome to another map review on Star Wars Battlefront 2. Today we have designated days 1.1, which I have reviewed in the past, I do believe. Uh, take your troops. It is a campaign single player 
mode, though you can play it in Conquest as well. And the reason why I am uh, re-reviewing this is because uh, one of the creators, um, I requested the story behind all the maps because uh, there are a lot of maps available in the Designated Days uh, universe or storyline, uh, but I never really knew the background uh, to all these missions. So instead of one uh, big epic campaign, it felt sort of like these loose missions. And now he actually wrote me an email uh, giving the story which you heard in the uh, intro. So in the future, of course, I will do more maps in chronological order and then give more background story as the, as the story uh, and saga evolves. Very, very cool. Uh, it is very, pretty much um, World War II inspired on some things, and it also increases in scale and epicness. As you can see a huge number of units here, and here we currently still have uh, battles against regular farmers. Operation Republic Ghost. We are under the command of Command of Gear. Ooh, and there we went. And I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, I, but I don't know out of the top of my head which maps. But on some of these maps, Raz has actually uh, done some work. I'm not entirely sure what kind of work he did, but he was involved with some of them. I also, um, the creator of the... Well, I don't... I, he was already assets, but... Uh, I was also contacted by one of the developers, uh, or developers who was involved with the Battlefront 3 Legacy, which uses assets found on the original Battlefront 3 that was cancelled. So we're going to see more of that in the future as well. There's also been requests of uh, more space maps, so we're going to get that as well. So there's a lot of more reviews coming out. The irony in this all is that uh, <laughs> during the last video that I did, which was the... Uh, Order 66, I got some comments saying like, this is not Battlefront 2, what are you talking about? What is this old crap? Making me realize that with the Battlefront EA, like Battlefront 2 release, there's now probably a lot of people as well that, um, you know, will think that is the only Battlefront 2 out there. And then when they see this, um, you know, it's a... Oh. They're, they're confused on what this is. And I realized that because of the both carry the same name, um, on Steam, the 2005 Battlefront 2 is now called Battlefront 2 Classic. But hey, it was released as Battlefront 2, so I'm just going to call these Battlefront 2 map reviews. I'm not going to call it Battlefront 2 Classic map reviews. I also am convinced that the new Battlefront will not have the longevity that this game has. Eventually it will unfortunately be forgotten probably, but with the mod supports, it's still, the commu the modding community is still alive and kicking. And hey, I mean, a few months ago, they re, um, you know, they relaunched the online service. I think they actually did that in the week that Battlefront 2 EA came out. Anyway, let's go back to the to the actual map and mission, right? So, uh, very much urban combat, but again, uh, we're fighting farmers, so this is very much a um, like agriculture environment. And I just love the scale, the epicness in terms of units that is going on. And it also doesn't really seem like the enemy AI particularly uh, focuses on you over the other units. I feel that I am as much a target as some of my my fellow members. And what I'm very curious about, so this is version 1.1. I don't know if um, when I originally reviewed it, if it was different then, but uh, what I was about to say is I'm curious, you know, if you go from designated days one through um, five and then on beyond, you know, to see the improvement of the mod makers, right? So the, so the improvements that they just do mechanically, but also map-wise. Uh, a good example is that Battles of the Storms, where uh, the first one, the Geonosis one, though it was very epic in scale, 
it did have a lot of very jarring pop-up that then later missions did not have and you saw the improvement as the missions uh, moved on I do actually think I still need to review two maps of that but that's kind of what you now have with the uh, with the channel where there's so much where people will say like oh do another epic arma or hey do another Star Wars factions or hey do another battlefields of World War Two you know just one man my channel is not big enough to where I can do a whole company. This is a one-man job, as is everything else. Of course, not the co-op games, but anything that. Oh, let's see. Take a closer look and see what's going on here. So one thing that I think is very cool with the lore in the story is that it um, has roots way before the Clone Wars uh, starts and also has some parallels to the um, events in the Phantom Menace. I kinda like to uh, to see people's take on the things that happen parallel to the events of the actual movies. Sort of like fan fiction style. I don't actively go out and look for fan fiction, I just I don't know. I don't. That's like, I'm not that much into fan fiction lore, but in this case, with like mod support, um, you know, I'm down for it. Like people, some people also said like, uh, they want to do something like Star Wars Factions. Um, you know, I, I support that fully. You know, the more creativity, the better. But I would definitely say, uh, you know, make a, make a story of your own. There's a lot of possibilities there. A lot of angles you can take. Wow, that guy just shot his own friend. There we go. You got it. You can clearly, if you, uh, it's gonna be more than just farmers, keep pushing. Ah, so the plot thickens, look at that. So where we first thought we were only going to be encountering light resistance. Resistance seems actually more severe than we thought. Commander Gear, of course, isn't all trusted very much. The um, what's really cool, but uh, is that also uh, the creator, um, one of the creators, he said that it would be cool to maybe have this uh, the 84th Legion in the uh, in the Star Wars factions as well, which I'll definitely uh, will put him in. Uh, but there you there would be half a um, skin request to put him in. There is on Mod DB there is a guy who does skin requests for uh, pretty much every faction. So if that person could put these in, you can definitely have them uh, star in some episodes of Star Wars Factions. There's also been people who wanted me to put like how I do Star Wars vs. Earth where people can name certain characters. They wanted me to do that with Star Wars Factions, but that's not going to happen. It's not the type of series. I think I've been this. Um, I might have been this one. Well, I've, yeah, I've definitely been this one. This is not an automatic weapon. You can clearly see if you're on the map uh, the path that we're going uh, through. Sorry, I oh, just shot my guy. One thing that's actually kind of cool is that some of these enemies now do wear a little bit more heavy gear. And um, some of these maps, so I've, I've played multiple maps uh, of the designated, uh, designated Day series. And again, there's a, there's a big inspiration on World War II for some of these. Uh, they all, these are also the creators of the um, 
the famous uh, D-Day map that stands as the most watched video on my channel. And there is also a mission, I think it's a night that is very much inspired by the uh, parachute drop during D-Day. Uh, something like the artillery uh, very much resembles World War II. And hey, if you... Ah, I can't say that, can I? Ugh. I was about to say talk something about The Last Jedi, but I can't. Well, let's just say that there is an homage to World War II in The Last Jedi in terms of... Uh, vehicles that are used so hey making this uh, World War two homage definitely uh, suits the uh, the style of Star Wars Keep uh, pressing on them. We need to know who they are. Oh, Jesus. Scope rifle. Sure, why not? Now this is of course version 1.1, so um, they have been uh, going back to this to improve this. Now one might argue that it is a little bit simplistic in that you go from uh, waypoint to waypoint, um, just following a route, but again the epic skill does help with it. The Battle of the Storms do have, and this is purely comparable to just this level. Again, uh, I, I'm sure that uh, future levels of this main days will also be more epic and varied. Um, but, you know, de the Battle of the Storms have a lot of, like, epic twists and cool stuff in the battle itself. But one also has to realize that the whole uh, approach on a map in the Battle of Storms is very different. And then, for example, the Kashyyyk one where uh, it is very much defense based so the map is pretty open and every time a new point in the map is highlighted where the focus of the action takes place and it uh, guides the player through there whereas usually you would have a map with two sides advancing on one another and fighting in the middle or in this case uh, you have a strict route the Geonosis level of the Battle of the Storms uh, more resembled something like that in a way, the, the Kashyyyk level of the Battle of Swords is really an exception because it's so rare to find a single-player defensive mission. Usually you are the attacker in that case. definitely tell by the architecture what I was talking about how it has a more earthly feeling which I think is pretty cool I think presentation wise it's very polished Ugh. also know that there are like some sub-series like there is uh, like spearhead and stuff and I think uh, I could be wrong but I think I I played a designated days mission once where I was a Wookiee or something this is a long time ago it was funny too in the last video that I did the uh, order 66 I told him that I, I said in the video that this was a map I did before I got a comment saying like didn't he didn't he review this just a while ago? I didn't answer it, but I was like, uh, yeah, 
five years ago. It's not a while. Five years is pretty long. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Please capture that point for the love of God. This is a long way I need to walk. See, this is what I'm talking about, where uh, it is very focused on, for example, infantry. Um, so you're gonna get these points where it's like, okay, you spawn. Oh, there's an invisible wall here. Great. <laughs> where you spawn and you spend, uh, you know, a lot of time running back to the point. What is happening? Okay. Hey, we can be gear. Ah, oh, shit, I didn't reset. Capture the command post. Okay. Oh. Alright, two more points. It's pretty cool too that you actually do unlock the hero at a certain point because I'm pretty sure that I would have unlocked it earlier due to my score, but it seems like it's triggered, which is fine. Ha! <laughs> Look at all of them. Just one grenade. It's gonna be beautiful. Oh, too far. Uh Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, look at this chaos. One thing you can say about these maps is definitely that they don't lack any action. Dear god. A mass murderer over here. Almost there. Keep pro. Okay. Solid troops. Good thing about uh, these maps, though, is that it's very well compatible with AI. The AI get rarely gets stuck. It's of course what we saw with the um, with the Order 66. Quite a a lot of AI got stuck behind these stairs, behind pillars, etc., etc. You just don't have that here. You see, all of them just go past. If they do walk into like the thing, they just walk around it. So. Very well playable with AI. Oh, baby. I'm out of grenades. Uh oh. I have to a lot of lines there. Die. Oh my goodness. Again, the epic skill. This is what we miss in Battlefront nowadays. I'm talking about the A1. I just want large battles. In terms of scale. And there we go. There went Commander Gear. See, good job. Now get your engineers working on setting up forward command center. There we go. Now it gets interesting. Now it gets different. Uh, Engineer, here we go. I always love these uh, elements in these single-player campaigns where, oh my god, where a uh, part of the environment changes. It fools, it, it, it feels epic. This is a long mission too, you can actually see that I 
I'm almost playing for 20 minutes. I did die a couple of times. You can probably uh, complete it in a lot quicker. Probably in like 15 minutes or something. There's also been some requests on me doing uh, some Camino maps. If you want that, please follow me on Twitter and let me know. That's where people can vote for the next map. Oh, and there we go. So yeah, so that is the end. And as we, as I said, next time we will have designated days 1.2 with the backstory. I hope you guys liked it. The link to the download can be found in the description down below. Uh, I don't know when we're going to return to designated days uh, 1.2. As I said, uh, I want to do the Battlefront 3 Legacy. Uh, people also requested a space battle. And I, run and I think the next... Uh, map in the Battle of the Storms is a space map, so we might do that. And then maybe after that we'll return to Designated Days. Again, there are a lot of stuff out there, also the Camino one. So we'll see. We have a lot of reviews uh, to look forward to. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.